we consider epigenetics, at one time an heretical idea at odds with widely understood precepts of Mendelian genetics, the structure and behavior of genes, and the accepted tenets of evolution and natural selection. And I suppose I can forewarn you that there is a moral to a kind of scary story. You may be surprised to know that Darwin did not invent evolution. The idea that all species are related and descended over time from common ancestors had been around for many years. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck suggested a mechanism for evolution before Darwin. His mechanism of evolution was based on the influence of environment on heredity. The most familiar example of Lamarck's idea is that of the giraffe's neck. Why is this animal so tall? And why is so much of its height in its neck? Lamarck suggested that as giraffes kept depleting the low-hanging fruit that made up their diet, they would stretch their necks to get at higher fruit. Since longer necks were so useful, this character would be passed on to the next generation. In Lamarck's theory, the giraffe's longer neck is a purposefully acquired character. In fact, an improvement of the giraffe. Lamarck's ideas were discredited to the point of ridicule after Darwin provided a more creditable explanation for species diversity and ancestry, and after Mendel's discovery of paired genes were belatedly understood as the basis of inheritance and as the objects of change in evolution. The key difference between Lamarck's seemingly simplistic explanation and Darwin's theory of natural selection is that inheritance and evolution are entirely random. In the nature versus nurture argument, the environment simply chooses or selects between mutations that have already accumulated by chance and entirely without purpose. In the nature versus nurture argument, nature wins. Or does it? Here are some studies to think about. The first study came out of nowhere, or to be more precise, out of Overkalix. That's a town in northern Sweden with remarkably precise and complete medical, agricultural, and social records of its citizens. Here's a table correlating the food supply of grandparents with the mortality of their grandchildren. Look closely at this table. If you're a male and your grandfather lived through famine in his teens, you would have had a 35% lower risk of dying from cardiovascular disease or diabetes than the grandsons in the general population. On the other hand, if your grandfather lived through a time of abundance in his teens, you, the grandson, would have a 67% higher risk of dying from cardiovascular disease or diabetes. But look, if you're this guy's granddaughter, you'd have been safe, having the same risk of illness and death as granddaughters in the general population. You would not have been affected by the life your grandfather experienced. But wait, look at the last column in the table. It is, if anything, more dramatic for young women. You were much less at risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetic mortality if your grandmother lived her teen years at a time of want and famine. Not only does this look a lot like the inheritance of Lamarck's purposefully acquired characteristic, but the character has been passed down through not one, but two generations.